Hello guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Medicine PYQ Topic Series and uh, the topic I have chosen is Sickle Cell Anemia. This is a very important topic. So let's get started. So let us first quickly see the questions which came and then we'll go to the topic. Uh, so the first question which came uh, is a 10 year old boy was brought to the OPD with fever and swelling of hands after playing football. And he gives a history of uh, previous episodes of swelling of hands on imaging his spleen was found to be shrunken. Which of the following is likely diagnosis? Uh, the second question is an 8 year old boy complains of multiple episodes of acute severe pain in his fingers and toes which resolves on its own for the past one year. Uh, which of the following condition is he most likely suffering from? So these are the options. So we'll come back to the uh, question uh, once we go through the topic quickly. So answer both uh, sickle cell anemia obviously. Uh, so let's quickly go through the topic. So the sickle cell anemia, it is an inherited autosomal recessive hemoglobinopathy. That means that there's a problem in uh, the hemoglobin structure. And it is a remember, it is an autosomal recessive. So this is a potential MCQ. Uh, its incidence is equal in male and female and then the pathogenesis it's a missense sense point mutation uh, this is also a potential question and what is being replaced is glutamic acid is replaced by valin at the sixth position of beta chain of hemoglobin so the normal hemoglobin that is hba it is replaced by hbs a very good mnemonic to remember this is glutamic is going and valine is welcome so it's a glutamic acid which is leaving the chain and it's a valine which is welcome which is coming so that changes the whole structure and the mutant is uh, formed so that is the main pathogenesis and these are all potential mcqs coming to the sickle cell trait versus sickle cell disease so there are two terms uh, which we should know uh, one is a sickle cell trait where only one gene is affected and in sickle cell disease, both the gene is affected. So if we see the pedigree chart, uh, so this is how the inheritance uh, works, uh, where if both the father and mother is having a sickle cell trait, that is one gene is affected. So 25% of children will be normal. 50% of children will have the sickle cell trait, that is one gene will be affected. And 25% will be having the disease proper. So if we see the sickle cell trait where just one gene is affected, we have normal hemoglobin of 60% and sickle cell hemoglobin that is HBS about 40%. And in the disease proper, which is the sickle cell disease where both the genes affected, we get more than 90% of uh, HBS. Coming to clinical features, which could be the clue in the clinical questions. And uh, this is very important. So initially we get pallor, jaundice, splenomegaly, but this is a very important point to note that later on this splenomegaly gets converted into autosplenectomy so that the spleen becomes shrunken. This is due to splenic infarcts. So this is an important point uh, to note here. Also, uh, in bone, dactylitis is an important feature which patient might present with. Uh, in brain, stroke, in lungs, acute chest syndrome, priapism could be uh, important finding. Certain infections could lead to crisis like uh, EBV infection could lead to hemolytic crisis. Power virus B19 infection could lead to a plastic crisis and entire spleen sequestered blood which can lead to sequestration crisis. So points important to note here are the uh, dactylitis, autosplenectomy, then the acute chest syndrome, jaundice, pigment stones and a certain crisis which can be part of sickle cell anemia. Then we can find a crew cut or hair on end appearance due to extra medullary hematopoiesis in an X-ray skull. Coming to the diagnosis, so family history and clinical manifestation important. Then uh, certain hematological tests which can give a clue are uh, increased retic count, they are decreased hemoglobin and hematocrit and the TIBC. Uh, generally, normocytic, normochromic with some sickle shaped cells in the peripheral blood smear are found. Uh, normal MCV, MCH, uh, normal serum iron and serum ferritin. And important finding is the hemoglobin electrophoresis reveals the predominantly the HBS type. Uh, certain other tests which is important, uh, the, just the name is important, like sickling test, solubility test, then the hemoglobin electrophoresis and HPLC, that is a high performance liquid chromatography, that is the gold standard for diagnosing sickle cell anemia. Coming to treatment, uh, so there are two modalities which can be discussed, which is one is the current treatment which is going on and certain future promises which can be uh, done for sickle cell anemia. So current treatment, so the drug which we can consider using is hydroxyurea. It generally increases the uh, hemoglobin F and also the stem cell transplant is another option. Uh, for future therapies, we have uh, this gene therapies which is coming up uh, using the CRISPR gene technology. 
so these are certain treatment options which you should be just aware of now let us go back to the question uh, so if we see the question so a 10 year old boy was brought to the opd with a fever and swelling of hands and remember the, he had a previous history of swelling of hands as well and on imaging the spleen was found to be shrunken so this is a very important finding the spleen is shrunken that is depicting towards uh, autosplenectomy again the second question an 8 year old boy complains of multiple episodes of acute severe pain in his fingers and toes so this is depicting towards uh, dactylitis and uh, again which of the following conditions is he most likely suffering from so uh, now i think it explains why sickle cell anemia is the answer so i hope guys uh, this video was useful and uh, this topic is very important so kindly note all the points till then uh, keep studying keep revising and i'll see you in the next episode cheers